Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the summary for the day of 292 for the 12th of December and uh, let's start off with uh, great news for Ukraine Slovakia have, read, have agreed and ready to transfer their MiG-29 fighters uh, to Ukraine uh, beginning in coming weeks so it's probably very soon so maybe in one two weeks times so probably be before the end of the year or maybe just past the new year Slovakia will be giving their MiG-29 to Ukraine so we're probably going to see more MiG-29 action and uh, in, in a while you will probably see why they need more and uh, the weird statement of the day EU have caught Iran not to supply drones and missiles to Russia but then they also tell uh, Iran to follow the deals of the nuclear deal and and also you know abandon their support of their allies in lebanon and syria and they also call iran to respect minority rights don't suppress their street protesters to tell them to abandon death penalties and fulfill international obligations so it, essentially eu is to tell is telling iran to you know just continue supplying the drones and missiles so and moving on to the southern front we have no uh news from the southern front there's the fighting uh, over in this region the Dnipro river uh, delta we don't really see much uh, of anything at all uh, moving to the Zaporizhia region or Zaporizhia line at the very end of the line at Velika Novo Silka fighting is reported at Velika Novo Silka or Boshaya Novo Selka uh, uh, where the Russians actually launched a local offensive probably uh, just a small attack uh, no significant advance was reported by the pro-Russian source Raiba. And uh, moving to the Donetsk region, uh, a MiG-29. No, I, I, I was telling you about MiG-29, right? So MiG-29 was shot down over Pelivka. And not just at Pelivka, there's also another place called Rodinskoye, uh, which is actually uh, Rodinsky, Redines, or Rodinsky uh, over here. Uh, there was al There's also a MiG-29 getting shot down. And uh, this is rather ridiculous because this is actually quite far from the front line 40 50 kilometers from the front line so the russian uh air force uh is really you know having a role but this one is called air defense force so i'm wrong so it's uh, they got shot down by some air defense still it's pretty far away maybe s400 perhaps and uh the russians are reported to be attacking a uh, novo mihailivka according to war gonzo fighting is reported at marinka uh they are still uh fighting heavily within this region uh th there is claims uh by the Donetsk people's republic uh that they have captured 70 percent of marinka and uh what does that mean that means they haven't moved a single inch because they already captured 70 percent since long long time ago so uh really not much changes uh, not much difference uh because the this line has never changed for months already uh there's also fighting reported at uh krasno horivka according to war gonzo uh, not much other information or details regarding uh, the fighting here. Over at the Pisky region, uh, the significant news was that the Ukrainians actually launched a attack against the in the direction of Pisky. So, uh, according to the Russian Defense Ministry, the Ukrainians 59 motorized infantry brigade uh, by an enemy att an attempt by the enemy company of the 59. Motorized Infantry Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. Yeah, it is correct, correct. I, I was kind of like confused. So it was, they were attacking the Russian position in the direction of Pisky, uh, but they were defeated by preemptive fire or probably just artillery strike. Uh, this is rem this is basically as much as how the, how the war has been being fought nowadays, where it's really hard to accumulate your forces to launch an offensive with uh, enemy drones flying over the place looking for you. And uh, the Russians seems to have uh, improved their the the drone operation, which allows them to detect uh, Ukrainian uh, offensive attempts before they even launch the offensive. So uh, there is a lot of this kind of report from the Russian Defense Ministry about uh, Ukrainian forces being being uh, shelled before they even moved out. Uh, the fighting is reported at Adivka, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Uh, from previous information that we have reported yesterday by Deep State UA is actually on the eastern side. So uh, 
So the Russians are now pushing from the eastern side of Edifka. Probably, I don't think they are, they are going to go direct into the city. They are probably want to just squeeze the Ukrainians. Probably, probably close close up the front line to nearer to Edifka to put pressure on the Ukrainian defenders. And uh, over at the New York region, uh, we still have report of fighting over at Yurivka or U uh or Uyevka according to the war gonzo but there's a possibility where war gonzo is simply repeating what was being reported by the ukrainian defense ministry rather than they have intel that the russians are attacking this direction uh, because war gonzo's uh, from my uh, monitoring uh, has shown that they do just sometimes half of their report is actually just duplicating what was being mentioned by the ukrainians so uh, take this with a pinch of salt uh, over at the Mayos region, uh, at the very top, there is fighting reported on the eastern sector of of Torres, and um, so they are, they are, the Russians are actually pushing this way. Uh, this the fighting uh, near Mayos is also reported by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, but I didn't copy the link into here. And uh, moving to the Bakhmut front, at the Bakhmut front, fighting is reported at Kerdyomivka according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry and also at Klishievka. So, um, reinforcement was reported at Klishievka, uh, previously uh, was mentioned, I think I mentioned this probably yesterday, uh, according to Raiba, the pro-Russian source. And uh, the, the fighting at Bakhmut continues. And a uh, most significant change in the front line at Bakhmut was that the Russian forces, or rather, uh, the Russian forces and DPR forces. So there is Russian and DPR forces have broke through the defense at, of the Zabamuka district, and uh, they have advanced six hundred meters on uh, Peshotrev Navy Avenue until Dobro Lyubova Street. Uh, so Dobro Dobro Lyubova Street is here. So the Russian forces have actually you know entered through this eastern side of Bakhmut city and they have entered into the residential area so the fighting is not just you no know, around this area of the um industrial zone but they actually have penetrated into the city itself so this is uh looking rather bad and uh, it's also very surprising that the russians managed to penetrate through in in my opinion rather easily so uh because I would I would imagine the Ukrainians have much have a much stronger line at the at the edge of the city of, of the city. So um, uh, we will definitely definitely have to watch uh, the Bakhmut uh, closely from now on. And uh, there is also continued fighting reported at Pohorodne, according to Raiba. The uh, Raiba mentioned that uh, several squads of the PMC, the Wagner PMC, have uh, occupied some strongholds over at Pohorodne. So, which means that the Wagners no longer operates the Bakhmut front on their own anymore because this information here actually mentions Russian army and DPR militias whereas the the northern part is now in charge of Wagner the actual offensive on the eastern side is now being conducted by Russian forces itself uh, with cooperation with the Donetsk militias so um, Bakhmut front definitely have some uh, significant change due to the change on change in composition of the russian forces and this is something that we need to note and um so reinforcement was reported at per, uh, paraskoyevka and uh, this is i already reported this yesterday and uh there is information that the ukrainian forces have bombed the overhead bridge uh this there's a railway overhead bridge over here and it's actually destroyed by the ukrainian forces that were reportedly retreating so um this is probably to collapse the bridge to block the road in in my opinion so that the the russian forces if they do penetrate through are unable to penetrate through this road um towards the rear of the uh, ukrainian position i don't think this is actually to you know uh break the railway lines in a any meaningful way uh because even to cross the cross over here they don't really need the bridge there's a lot of other bridge and this road is actually not a bridge it's easily easily you can cross so the only reason to blow up the bridge is to block the road so this is a major highway mo leading towards the rear towards uh, Slovians. so this is actually a major road so 
blowing up the the railway line uh the railway bridge will actually uh block the road so if not then i don't see any other roads except for this one a uh, detour around uh Berkievka. or they will actually have to capture uh, paris koyevka and uh use this road so maybe this is just a in this is just a uh due diligence or you know just in case the russians do penetrate through Pehorodne, they want to actually stop this and prevent a uh, perhaps a possible uh flanking movement to the rear of Peroskoyevka. so uh yeah so no it's not a really a bad move from the ukrainians i think it's a perfectly uh tactically tactical sense or strategically sense uh well thought out uh over at uh, soleda there's fighting reported at soleda uh no no clear information about the fighting over here and uh fighting continues to be reported at yakovlivka uh, despite uh, we have information of the conceding of the town to the Russian side by Deep State UA and uh, and also pro-Russian so uh, pro side uh, reporting that they have captured it or they are actually clearing doing cl clearing operation but the Ukrainian Defense Ministry have not conceded the town uh, in their reports over at the Sivas front at the Sivas front um, fighting is mainly over at Vekam Okanyamske uh, this is actually a continuation of the fighting from yesterday uh, I, I mean reported yesterday and also the same thing happened over at Bilohorivka where the fighting continue to be continue to be reported over here uh, the fighting within the jungle or oh, sorry the forest uh, of Serebrianka forest tree uh, is not reported anymore uh, there's no report of reports of fighting over this region here uh, not sure who gave up and uh, over the criminal front the there is exchange of offensive by both sides uh, over at the direction near Shevano Popivka so Raiba mentioned that the Ukrainian uh, forces tried to storm towards the direction of Shevano Popivka however the Ukrainian defense ministry reported that the Russia Russians are the one that is doing the attacking so uh, not sure who is uh, telling the truth Although the the Russians, the pro-Russian side, the Raiba actually be is quite specific because they did mention the units. Um, over at Makievka, uh, the Russians uh, report are uh, reported by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry to be attacking Makievka. So, um, there is also reports of fighting over here at Novoyehorivka. So Novoyehorivka is very interesting because um, previously our front line is along the river. At Sehievka towards uh, Kovalivka. So, for fighting to arrive at Novo Yehorivka means that the Russians have actually pushed forward over at this direction. This is actually in contradiction to the information that we have that uh, Ukrainian DRGs were being uh, contacted at Darish, uh, sorry, Dashne. So, uh, we did not have the reports of any fighting at Dashne today. Or any information of the situation at Dashni anymore. So maybe this is just a one off situation, whereas the front line has been pushed by the Russians uh, over at Novo Yehorivka. So, um, very interesting situation over here. And um, moving further up north in the Svatove direction, uh, there is fighting reporter at Stemakivka. According to the pro Russian source, uh, Raiba, they say that the, there's recon forces of the 80th Airborne Assault Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces uh, were, were actually trying to find the Russian positions in the in the region of Stemakivka. However, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry mentioned that Russians were, were actually attacking this direction. And uh, fighting is also reported at Novo Selivsky. So, so uh, this is also by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. So for those uh, pro-Ukrainian uh viewers uh i bet you have noticed that i keep saying ukrainian defense ministry so the most to this report 7 60 70 percent is all ukrainian uh ukrainian source you know i just want to let you know these reports are all balanced so if so don't don't cope please please don't cope and um and also you no know, over at if you look in the very strategic uh, picture over at the Seattle Bay Crimea fronts you can see that uh Previously, we have mostly the Ukrainians doing the attacking. It seems like the tide have changed. It seems like the Russians are now pushing instead of the of instead of the Ukrainians. Uh, 
And even in the Russian Defense Ministry report, they no longer say the Ukrainians are attacking this, 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 this position. However, instead they are saying that in the Kopian's Liman direction, they are doing the offensive and they killed X number of units and whatever. So it seems like the tide have changed. The Russians are actually now pushing in this Fiatove, Crimea direction and Kopian's direction. Kopian's is uh, not much. The fighting is mainly over Fiatove and Crimea region, this line. So the Russians are actually doing the attacking now. So I think this is the main uh, gist of the situation over at the northern part of, of the front lines. And I think this is something uh, that we should take note of. So um, otherwise, uh, we have no more, no other information already. So this is the summary for the day of 200, 292 for the 12th of December. Please press the subscribe button if you are not subscribe you should subscribe to this channel as well as uh, all the other channels that uh, dpa have you can go and check out the channel list uh, dpa have uh, other sub channels and you should go and subscribe especially dpa war channel uh tentative plan is that the sip web will be transferred uh entirely to the dpa war channel in uh in the new year and um over and also for for those that have not pressed the like button, please, please, please press the like button and uh, and also uh, do share this with your contacts and friends who are interested in this war. And I think I have, I have nothing else to add. Let me see. Oh, I, there's actually helicopters that I didn't report. This is the wrong icon. Uh, there's a Mi-8 that shot down over Kodakov and also at Konstantinivka. Yeah, sorry, I missed out the helicopters. So there's two MiG-29s and two MiG-8s that were shot down on the Ukrainian side. So, you know, it's actually quite a big loss over the past day. So anyway, and I'll see you in the next update.